Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for attending to Connect and Extend and Innovate Oracle SaaS Partner Kickoff Webinar. I am Jung Kress, part of the product management team. In case you missed one of our webcasts, on-demand recordings are available at the Oracle Video Hub, including presentation for download. For details, please see our monthly community newsletter. In today's presentation, the integration team will present the updated positioning, new functionality, including live demos and partner resources leading to additional service opportunities. Please welcome our integration team to the webcast. Deepak Aurora, Vice President for Oracle Integration. Anthony Reynolds, Integration Expert on the core functionality. Nathan Engstead, Expert on Innovation. Praveen and myself. SaaS services like ERP, HCM and CX need to be connected. Oracle integration offers certified adapters and pre-built connectivity. Objective of the call is to provide you sales, marketing and enablement resources to deliver successful customer projects. Quick housekeeping. Please ask your questions via the Q&A tool in the Zoom console anytime. All provided information and links are available via the resource kit at bit.ly slash links OIC. Recording and slides will be available at the community website and at our YouTube channel. Please share your feedback via the Zoom survey at the end of the webcast. Please pay attention to the safe harbor statement. For today's agenda, followed by my opening, I will hand over to Deepak Aurora and team to present the latest highlights and positioning of Oracle integration including live demos on robotic process automation to innovate, on advanced features like disaster recovery, or the Rapid Adapter Builder, which opens up new service opportunities for you as a partner. We will conclude the webcast with resources on the sales, marketing, and enablement side to build new service offerings and deliver successful customer projects, including questions and answers. Congratulations and thanks for an amazing fiscal year 2024. As highlighted in the earnings call, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Revenue achieved 2 billion in Q4, which is a 42% growth. Related service revenue is three to four times larger. Why is integration key for you as a partner and your service offerings? SaaS services like HCM, ERP, and CX need to connect with other SaaS services and on-premise applications. Oracle Integration is the only vendor who offers certified adapters for Oracle SaaS. OIC empowers your SaaS implementation service revenue. Customize and extend based on your customer needs. Oracle Integration, Process and Visual Builder services are used by the Oracle teams developing SaaS, and the same services can be used by you as a partner. Realize the majority of your service revenue by customization and ensure profitability by leveraging pre-built templates and extensions. Increase customer satisfaction and achieve additional service revenue by a driving innovation. Innovate with generative AI. Congratulations and thanks for your outstanding success in fiscal year FY24. More than 6,000 customers trust Oracle integration to connect their business. Growth accelerates with up to 1,000 new Oracle integration instances per month. 100 plus adapters ensure connectivity with almost any application or technology. Starting with Oracle integration, customers can grow and innovate based on their complete cloud infrastructure portfolio, including AI, analytics, and other OI services. Oracle Integration was awarded leadership in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for integration platforms seven times in a row. Benefit from a market-leading mature product driving innovation and cloud utilization at your customers. Trained and certified experts like you deliver successful customer projects. With more than 10,000 consultants, you, the partner community, make the difference. Thanks and congratulations. How to continue this enormous success in fiscal year 2025? In this webcast, you will hear from the team how to successfully position Oracle integration, learn how to land new customers, and expand your service offerings. 
Let's get started with three scenarios at your customer. Land with Oracle SaaS, expand your footprint at the customer, and automate business processes for additional service opportunities. Certified adapters and pre-built recipes ensure rapid, successful customer projects. Oracle integration is the door opener for Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We make it easy to land and expand. It's a clue to connect SaaS services and to position additional platform services. It's also the enabler to shift on-premise applications like a business suite or PeopleSoft to the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Expand successful Oracle integration customer projects with further rollouts to other geographics and custom entities. Connect additional SaaS modules and third party. For example, a customer is using integration to connect HCM. Use the same integration service to connect ERP Cloud and SAP. Like database connectivity, it's also a huge benefit to operate a unified enterprise integration platform. Use Oracle integration for Oracle and non-Oracle applications as a true enterprise IPaaS platform. Automate business processes with AI and robotic process automation. Oracle integration tries additional service offerings and cloud utilization in the new and innovation feature. Robotic process automation functionality will be launched as part of Oracle integration. It enables customers to automate API-less processes Use accelerators or pre-built processes, recipes to dramatically reduce time to market and simplify the development cycle. The partner community supports you with sales, marketing and enablement information. Regular communications via the newsletter, webcast and Slack channel. At the end of the webcast, we will highlight each area. With this short introduction, I would like to hand over to Deepak. Thank you, Jürgen. Good uh, morning, afternoon, good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today. Um, first of all, um, you know, I wanted to ask for a huge thank you to all of you. Uh, because of many of your efforts, we've been able to really grow the business um, year over year. We've had another very, very good year. We grew 47% again year over year. So that is uh, we are one of the leading uh, OCI services in at Oracle that's growing at such a rate and that a lot of that is thanks uh, to you. From an engineering perspective, we've had uh, another good year. We've had, you know, six releases and we've kept up with our release schedule. Our roadmap has been bang on. We haven't, uh, we've had some deferrals with some delays, but overall we've had a very good track record of uh, delivering our releases. As Jürgen highlighted, we are over 6,000 plus customers that rely on Oracle integration for their automation needs. Our stickiness factor is very high. Once uh, OIC gets in, you're able to really expand the business, grow this within the line of business and across the line of business of so both depth and breadth is there. So something that you need to be aware of, this is a great opportunity of there. Um, we are now sitting at 50% uh, of the fleet is at OIC3, which is really, really good. OIC3 is our new vehicle, our new inst our new uh, technology that we've been delivering a lot of uh, features on, and hopefully you're all aware of it. We've also reaching a really good milestone of upgrading Gen 2 to now be at 45%. And this is a, a key area of focus, and we're going to request all your help here to make sure your customers, your uh, anybody you're working with are aware that the upgrades are coming and really handhold them through the upgrade. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll be happy to, to answer those. Again, a great 64% growth from a, um, you know, instance perspective. But the key highlight is very recently we had, uh, we were transacting uh, over a billion messages a week. This goes to show how well uh, we've been able to grow the business with your help and how customers are relying on our platform to really connect, integrate, and automate their their enterprise business across the board. So some CUNY features that we've already released and will be releasing, you've seen the extensible project, whether that's through the accelerator framework or sharing content or sharing assets, sorry, not sharing content, but sharing assets within the context of a project. Uh, private endpoint, this was a, a feature that was released uh, earlier this year. Uh, it's been one of our 
you know, leading features where customers are using using this a lot. Uh, OIC3 is now in GovRealm. So for those uh, partners that are in the uh, government space, this is another opportunity for you to grow business. Uh, we'll talk about DR. We'll talk about our RPA. We'll talk about REB in the in the in the later side. But one thing that I want to call out is that we are we will be launching a new um, healthcare edition for OIC, and this will open up even further opportunities for many of you. So, so the customer challenges and needs have not changed. Whether you're connecting and extending your SaaS applications or shifting workloads to the cloud. The goal is to simplify, automate across the applications, the data and the partners, right? You want to increase productivity, you want to reduce costs, you want to improve business outcomes, custom experiences. And by connecting your applications, you want to increase, you know, provide a data platform or a data fabric that can be used, uh, you know, a data foundation for innovation. So also we want to allow you to innovate faster with different newer technologies and you know AI of course we'll talk about AI in a bit um, so we'll go from there okay so I think most of you have seen this slide why is connecting and automating your enterprise so hard we've got a plethora of application whether that's on premise uh, in the cloud multi-cloud ISVs multiple SaaS multiple GIUs GBUs it's just a gambit of, of different applications residing all over the place. And a lot of them are point to point. Uh, you've got different lines of businesses where some may be using the same tool set or some may be using different tools. So it just gets very hard. And the experience is it's a fragmented customer. There's low confidence in the data structures. AI services lack the context needed to be effective. So a lot of the AI hallucination is happening. But if I was to flip this a little bit, and look at it from a healthcare perspective, the problems are very similar. It's just that now your end applications are changing. You're now looking at EHR systems, you're looking at pair systems, you're looking at clinical apps, you're also looking at a lot of the same SaaS ecosystem that other enterprise applications are using. So you've got both, both back-end and front-end applications that you have to deal with. Again, the problem is still the same. Interestingly, we were at, at a customer meeting where a CIO presented his version of this deck of this slide, and it was it looked very similar to what we have again. Again, a fragmented customer experience, uh, no single source of truth uh, for trusted data, and then AI can't be applied on data. So the problem is still the same, whether you're in healthcare or or not. It's just it just takes a different dimension. So how do we help here? It's you know you connect your app and your data, so build your data fabric, so automate your connectivity uh, through our, our large library of adapters, uh, either by using uh, the adapters or building your own or RPA bots. So eliminate the data silos, you know, make better decision making and really build that data fabric that will allow you to enhance your AI with enterprise data, right? Now you want to go and automate your processes. You want to build automations. You want to automate your complex processes to reduce manual work, to simplify things, to standardize, to, to boost productivity, to be able to do other things that you are you want to do by creating these automations, whether it's with your uh, trading partners, whether they're digital, whether they're human, whether they're applications, whether they're APIs, it doesn't matter. You want to build these automations and really create it, uh, create your uh, create processes that can be automated. And at the end of it, you want to start now innovating with AI. And innovating with AI is not just using AI for, you know, generative AI, for building your workflows or creating your mappings, but also realizing that there is a whole new business of automating orchestration of AI services, right? So you can use you can use Gen AI or be with AI. So automate orchestration of AI services. Uh, decision making and IDP, intelligent document processing. So you want to really streamline your processes. You want to speed adaptability. You want to use that data fabric, the automation to increase scalability and provide innovation with AI. So that's your automation journey. And we are able to help you automate that and help you build that journey through our building blocks of business automation. So you're going to see that we're starting to use the word automation a lot more for us 
It is about automating your end-to-end, -end, but these are the building blocks, whether it's an integration automation or a workflow automation or an RPA automation, right? RPA already has automation and it's a robotic process automation, whether it's using a B2B to automate, whether you're using decisions, whether you're using document processing to automate, whether you're using a conversational assistant or you're using a low-code application. These are all building blocks in your automation journey that help you achieve that goal of connecting, automating, and innovating, right? So if you look at the whole platform, so this is a business automation platform where you are able to leverage our large library of adapters to connect multi-SaaS and included, if you can see, there is also uh, in, in EHR now that we're talking to, you can talk to on-premises, whether you're shifting your workload to the cloud or actually working with an application on-premise, whether it's multi-cloud and third-party SaaS. I understand that we're Oracle on Oracle, but we are a true iPaaS, so we can actually create automations for, for third-party applications. It doesn't always have to come back to Oracle. It's great when it does, but if it doesn't, we are a true iPaaS. Um, it really work in that perspective. But again, by using our pre-built connectivity through the adapters, our building box, you, the partner community, can really go after and build these pre-built solutions through recipes and accelerators to help provide, reduce that time to market, to create innovation, to, to make things faster. You know, using our data layer, we're providing data consistency across the enterprise. We're providing a foundation for data-driven automation. A lot of that depends on being able to connect disparate applications, standardizing the data, normalizing it, and making sure that this data can be injected into a data lake or into a large LLM or into data vectors that where AI can work on it, right? But without that, you're not going to get your increased productivity, you're not going to get your reduced costs, and you won't get engaging experiences, whether that's a transactional system, an analytical system, or when you're trying to drive AI. We are the foundation of your business slash healthcare automation platform. And with the building blocks, our adapters, our uh, automation, sorry, our accelerators, we can really deliver all those things that we want. So again, the to help you accelerate the three mantras are connecting your apps to build a data fabric, automate your processes to extend business application, and then innovate with AI, right? So very quickly, and I'm sure you, you've seen this slide a few times, um, you know, disparate business systems need to be synchronized. Again, going back to building that data fabric layer, why is this so important? It improves accuracy, it provides efficiency, and it creates a great for a way to do observability, not to mention all the stuff that we can do for LLMs later on. But if you look at the growing number of adapters that we have, we've published a lot. So uh, Praveen's team has been really, really busy in kind of figuring out what we do and also creating a framework where if there's no adapter that is supported by us, guess what? There is an opportunity for the partner ecosystem to go build one using the rapid adapter builder, right? One thing I do want to call out is our healthcare, where we now have HL7 and, M and M MLLP adapter, and our fire adapter will be published very soon for healthcare services, right? But one of the things we are looking at is also now doing multi EHR, so supporting other EHRs other than Oracle using our RAB framework and using our, again, growing library of adapters. Gr a, a great opportunity for the partner community to contribute and you know make some money at it while you're at it. So again, pre-builds, another big area for all of you to be really, really active in, whether it's um, leveraging an accelerator and, and doing the deployment at a customer site, extending it and using it, or building one, right? You can build accelerators, and I think um, Praveen's covered how you can become a contributor where you can monetize your assets that live on the OCI marketplace for other customers to use. This could be a great opportunity for all of you to not only build, but also then provide you know, a service contract on top of it should a customer want to use your accelerator. So this is, a, a, again, another really great opportunity. I'm going to call this out again in the healthcare sector. 
Um, there's a lot of business to be had where customers still want to integrate their Fusion applications with Oracle EHR. Um, you can just imagine the possibilities, whether that's in the workforce optimization, uh, in the supply chain optimization, predicting inventory demand, you know, start smart staff assignment, a replenishment of, of uh, your forecasting, your inventory. There's a lot of areas that you could really, really create some amazing solutions that customers can benefit and you're able to also monetize on this aspect as well. So this is a huge opportunity for the partner community to look at. Now, again, we are looking at rapidly delivering values with all the systems. So whether you're an ISV or you're building a custom applications or you're using Oracle SaaS, we have the building blocks running on top of OCI, whether you're using an integration automation, whether you're using a robotic process automation or accelerators that is a combined pre-built solution, adapters, events, it's all here for you. And if we were to extend that we, using Golden Gate and some other aspects of our OCI AI services, you can really deliver value very, very quickly, right? So, so again, I don't want to talk, this is this could go on forever, but if you were able to use Oracle integration to talk to some of your backend applications, to provide real-time updates to uh, a data lake uh, concept, to a, a database where Golden Gate is now replicating, or you're using the data vector technology to write to data lakes, which will augment your artificial intelligence. We are part of the plumbing that help you deliver all of that into those things. So again, the connect, the automate, and the innovate, this is a theme going forward, right? Again, I'm not gonna spend so much time, you will have these things, but imagine if you're able to send all your transaction data, your data, uh, your ETLs to a data warehouse using database vector technologies to then power your LLMs to create AI that is really beneficial for you, right? Um, yeah, we've kind of talked about accelerators and application integration with RPA. So very quickly on the automate, I am conscious of time. I want to give you guys a lot of time for demos. So uh, <clears throat> extending business applications, we're improving your compliance, we're improving your agility, we're improving your operations uh, across the board. Again, these are the main building blocks of building your automations, whether it's an integration or it's a process workflow or you're creating rules or you're creating uh, a B2B flow or you're using RPA to do this. These are all part of your building blocks to be able to rapidly deliver value in there and most of you have used OIC, you've seen how easy it is to use. We're just building on these aspects uh, for you. So how to extend business applications. This is your bread and butter. This is where you have all excelled. Uh, we want you to keep doing more of this, uh, but we want you to now start using OIC 3 with all the lovely new features we're building, bring everything into context of a project, start using different automations to build true business process automation across the board. Um, but again, please uh, let us know if and when you guys need anything, we're more than happy to help. Um, so, and now the last part is innovating with AI, right? So AI and foundation of data. So definitely your data fabric layer and drive to help you drive informed decision-making and streamline natural processing process, right? So you're able to really improve your efficiency, your compliance and accuracy. Again, same building blocks, you can see it's a theme, a recurring theme that you're able to do. You're able to use not only the uh, building blocks that come with Oracle integration, but now you can leverage all of OCI to really drive some of this uh, um, foundation and a lot of these areas where you need this. But well, one thing that you should be looking at is, you know, IDP sounds really, I think IDP has been around for some, but now being able to use document AI services and sentiment analysis and all of other things, you can really drive value by using these technologies and other um, little nuggets of information to drive, you know, how, how do we, how can we use IDP to drive value? How can we automate and how can we use OPA to drive a lot of these things? But one of the other things that we have to now look at is, is not just being able to use GenAI within our flow management into how to create flows or manage our um, 
mappings or create decisions or build documentation using AI, but how can Oracle integration orchestrate my AI services? We now are gonna get a plethora of, of different large um, services, whether it's language, whether it's sentiment, whether it's PII approval, whether it's translate and classify, um, or other sorts of AI services that might be living in, in, the, in the larger ecosystem, you're gonna need an engine and what better engine to use than Oracle integration to do that? It can you can use different automations. You can put a human in the middle. You can do B two B trading. You could do uh, workflow management. You could do document understanding. Right, all these things are available to you to build these orchestrations to literally you know power with AI. Again, huge opportunity for all of you. So with that being said, uh, I'm just going to hand this over uh, to. Um, to Nathan, but I just want to call out that Gartner has judged us a leader seven times in a row. And again, I would like to thank all of you for all of your support for this. So Nathan, handing over to you. Thanks, Deepak. Well, well, thanks very much. So what I want to do is just walk through a quick demo here and kind of be, be a little, little bit of a lightning round demo where we're kind of highlighting um, a, a couple of a couple of the strategic directions that Deepak uh, mentioned. Uh, the first is uh, the, of course, our, our pre-built uh, recipes and accelerators. Uh, the, the second is is how we're using this concept of projects to consolidate the building of of automation solutions, regardless of the underlying technology. And lastly, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, our new R RPA offering. So I'm going to start this demo by uh, coming to our. Uh, marketplace store where we have all of our um, recipes and accel accelerators, so all of our pre-built um, uh, solutions. And I'm going to search for a solution called customer uh, or create customer, let's just say. And we see have this create customer uh, using ERP cloud. And I want to go ahead and use uh, that that particular pre-built recipe. And so what's going to happen now is, is we're going to go out to our marketplace. We're going to download all of the assets for that particular pre-built integration. And we can see it's now available to us. And when we come to our projects, uh, we see that we have this Oracle ERP create customer. And we see a number of other projects here uh, for other purposes, for other um, business, business solutions. If we open up the the project will see in here automatically are a couple of different assets. So we have just this one integration. Of course, a, a, a pre-built solution could contain any number of integrations and we see uh, the connections here as well. So obviously one of the first things we do when we're creating a, um, when we're creating an integration is we want to go ahead and configure our connection. And you notice that we've actually placed the connections within inside the project to kind of isolate those and segregate those from all the other connections, provide some additional governance and security over the use of those connections. So I could come in here and fill in, as usual, all the properties about what my ERP cloud host is and all the security protocols. But the other thing too is, is while it's nice to be able to segregate those uh, some of those connections while I'm doing testing and, and, and such, it, it is nice to be able to still be able to share those connections across various projects. And so we've added this ability to share a connection. And so I have this project where uh, this project called ERP Cloud Connections and where I have one connection in there uh, connecting to this Dev 14. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply say that instead of configuring all the connection information here, I just simply want to use a connection information that is provided uh, in that one. And so now I can save this and we are good to go to use that connection. And again, this gives us the ability to make a decision as to, or make have a choice as to whether or not we're gonna use the kind of isolated connection within our project and segregate that from the rest of the world, or we want to go ahead and share those connections across uh, various projects. So we take a look at the integration itself. It's a fairly simple integration where we're gonna get a, a request for some customer information. We're going to get the customer data and then we're going to say, you know, if it's a new customer, we're going to take this path down here and create the customer record. And if it's an existing customer, we're going to take this path over here 
and we're simply going to uh, update the customer. And we're going to do the update the customer using our uh, ERP cloud adapter. And again, all of this is completely pre-built, ready to go, ready for you to use uh, out of the box. But let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail where we're creating this customer. And if we take a look at the mapping for this, take a look at just the fields that we've mapped, we'll see that the fields that we're passing in here, some organization name, and then a bunch of different uh, address information. So in this case here, we're not creating the customer, we're simply updating their, their address, uh, address information. And of course, we're getting all that information from the request that's coming in. As you see here, the customer address, all this information being mapped here. Well, notice this one field here, this postal code. One of the things we want to do as part of this integration uh, for our business is we want to ensure that we are using these nine-digit U.S. zip codes, not, not the standard five-digit zip, zip codes. And so we don't really know what's going to be coming into us, uh, but we do want to make sure that when we actually make this call that we're using the nine-digit zip code um, uh, instead. And now, you know, I suppose the United States Postal Service uh, it was kind enough to provide us this website here where we can actually go out and find an address so I can search for uh, Oracle Park, uh, Oracle, uh, Oracle headquarters here. Well, used to be headquarters. And I can see that here's the address and they actually return back to me this nice nine digit zip code. Now, they probably have an API for this. Quite frankly, I don't really know what the API is. I, I don't really have time to uh, find someone to go off and get me API keys and register with the post service or whatever the case may be. I need to get this change done and I need to get it done quickly. And that's where robotic process automation comes in. And so you'll see that in addition to the integration components we have in this project, we also have robot components. And what I can do is I can simply create a new robot called get zip nine. So I get the nine digit zip code. And robots are really great for connecting to applications the same way that we normally connect applications using APIs. But in cases where there simply are no APIs or it's just not really convenient for us to use the APIs as is the case uh, this time here. So you'll notice the canvas here looks very similar to the integration canvas. We, we wanted to make it such that if you understood how to um, create an integration flow, you would automatically understand how to create a robot flow. Of course, with every integration or with any, even on the robots, one of the first things we need to do is we need to define the interface. So we're going to say, just like we saw on that website, we need to pass in the address and we need to pass in their current zip code. So we'll just say address and zip code. And what we want to come out of this robot is this uh, zip nine, so this nine digit zip code. So we defined our interface. And now we can train our robot to use this website over here uh, to go ahead and find and retrieve the nine digit zip code. So the first step is, is we need to tell the robot uh, where it is that we're going to be, which website we're actually gonna be going to. We have a number of different ways we can do that. Um, we can use a robot connections. Um, we can actually just, of course, type in a hard coder value. We can also have this convenience here where we simply say, hey, just go find the current open browsers, in which case there's only one here, and let's just go ahead and use that one. And so now that we've taught the robot which website we want to do, we now need to give it instructions on how to use this website. How do I actually go out there and get that, that nine digits of code information? So we have a, a complete low code palette here of different robot actions, different flow control actions and such. I could simply drag and drop each one of these over here step by step saying, let's first click this button and then could click some other buttons and so on and so forth. That would certainly work. It's a bit tedious. And so we've built in a recorder capability uh, to where I can simply say, let's go ahead and record these, these activities. So I'll say I wanna record from this uh, zip code browser page. And you'll notice that now, uh, as I move the mouse around, we're actually highlighting the various UI elements in, in the, um, uh, on the web page. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to, I want to say I want to find by address. So I'll click that. And we'll see that we now come up with a little panel here telling us exactly what's going on. We're going to say that we're going to name this click by address. I'm going to give it a target name of by address. We're clicking on an anchor element that that was important to me. And we're going to perform this action, that is to click on the element. And then we say that, yeah, once we save this re recorded steps, we want to actually ex not only save it, but we want to execute it on the web page itself. So we'll save that. And of course, we see that we go to the next page. But you also see that we've added this new step 
uh, to our flow. And you can see this little flashing icon over here. This indicates that this is the next recording step. At any point in time, I can change where we're recording from. I can pause the recording, do some things, come back and restart the recording uh, anywhere we need. So in this case here, we want to go ahead and type in our Oracle Parkway. And we want to record the data entry of this step here. And so we see again the, the name. We can always change these. So for instance, I can change this to the target name to be address. Uh, we want to uh, enter some text. It's it's telling us that's probably what we want, want to do here is enter some text. But we could override that. So we could say we're going to get text or click on the text or whatever the case may be. We see the test value here. So this is the value that's going to be used during the recording. But we don't want to train the robot to use this value. Otherwise, we're always getting the zip code for Oracle. What we want to do is actually tell it that at runtime, you should be using this input that we've provided called address. And so this is something a little bit different that we're, do, that we're doing um, than what a lot of the RPA vendors are doing. A lot of the RPA vendors will say, um, you can only go ahead and record and record the test values. And then later on, you got to go back and fix all those and put in the parameters. In our case here, we're saying that we can do both of them at the same time. And so in this case here, uh, I'm going to go say, I want to train it to use a zip code. Now you notice I actually entered the test value here. I didn't enter it on the web page. You can do either way, whichever is more convenient for you. So I'll enter the uh, test value there. And of course that's automatically entered in for us. Next step I want to do is just click the find. We'll save that. And now we have our nine digit zip code. We can click on that. We don't want to click on this actually. What we want to do is we actually get that text. And so this is a good example where uh, we want to override the behavior that the recorder might naturally do. And where do we want to put that text? We want to save that text in the output. That's this zip nine. So we'll save that and our recording is all done. We can add a log message here. So we'll just let's go ahead and log the output. So we'll say that the log is just going to simply contain that output, that nine digit zip code. And we're all done. Now, like I mentioned, because we were uh, because we've been kind of altering the the uh, recording activities as we go along, we don't need to go back here and make any changes. Um, everything is ready to run as it is. However, if we wanted to, for instance, uh, we could go ahead and drill down into each of these low code activities. And you can see that we've actually done quite a bit of work here as you were recording. So for instance, we've created some pre-validations for you. So as an example, before we enter the zip code, we wanna make sure that the zip code element is actually there. And we're gonna wait 30 seconds. You can override all of these. You can override exactly what the conditions are that you wanna wait for. And what's nice is if this precondition fails, we're not going to give you some strange, you know, X path X, Y, Z was not found. We'll return back to you a very nice message that makes it very easy for you uh, to go ahead and um, decide how you want to go ahead and process that or how you want to go ahead and fix that. Um, the other thing we do is we say, hey, you can actually provide some screenshots. So, you know, what we want to say is maybe we want to grab a screenshot of this. So after we've actually captured that data, uh, we want to make sure that we, from a debug perspective, we can see that indeed the uh, the uh, data was entered into into the page. So screenshots is a great way, of course, to debug uh, user interfaces. So we'll save this. And we, we now have our robot. To, to run robots, we need environments. And so I'm just going to go ahead and add an environment here. I'll add my environment that's running on my desktop. And what we'll do now is we'll tell that this robot, this robot is going to be running through this robot environment. So no, that, in other words, any any time that we run this robot, we're going to have all of the, the the systems, all of the VMs that are able to run that robot, all defined in here. Maybe one, it could be ten. Of course, if it's more, we will go ahead and load balance that workload uh, across all of the VMs in that robot. Now, we don't allow you to execute the robots directly because we think that that's probably a bit of a bad practice because, again, these robots are kind of temporary. In this case here, we're just creating the robot temporarily. Um, but we uh, we may want to eventually switch this robot out with an API. And, if, of course, if we build all our applications against the robot directly and then later on we want to use the API, we need to go back and change all those applications. So... To use this robot, we're going to use the robot directly within Oracle integration. So we have a new robot activity. We simply say, I want to add a new robot activity. We'll call this uh, get zip nine. And we can now choose the robots, of which is only one in our project right now. We can choose that robot and we can now uh, finish configuring that. Now you notice this, this looks exactly like any kind of other invoke. We have the invoke here and then we have the map. 
for the mapper, we can actually say, here's our address in the zip code. We, of course, can get that information from the uh, input information. And so we can simply map the address to the address and the postal code to the zip code. And we now have that mapped. Now, there's one last thing that we need to do. Um, and uh, that is, uh, of course, this mapping here is still going to use the original zip code. And so I would need to come in here. And I would need to find that zip code mapping that we have. And of course, that's coming from the original. I would need to remove that mapping and then replace it with what we're getting back from our robot, which of course is this zip nine. So once we've done that, we're all done. We've now easily added a robot into our integration uh, that allows us to go out there and enhance the data that we are provided, get that new enhanced data, and then update this. And what's nice about this, of course, is we've done all of this uh, by starting with a pre-built integration uh, and then uh, enhancing that integration to our specific needs. So uh, I don't think that we have time to actually run this right now, but of course we could go ahead and activate uh, our robots and we could activate our integrations. Uh, and then once we have all of that, uh, we would be able to run these and then look at the, the unified activity streams where we see both the activities that are occurring within the integration, as well as the detailed step-by-step -step activities that are occurring within the robots. So with that, um, I guess we can, unless there's any questions, I guess we can turn it over to Praveen. Nathan, thanks for the excellent live demo and the wonderful overview of Oracle Robotic Process Automation. Next, we would like to introduce you Rapid Adapter Builder, where you can build your own adapter. Over to you, Praveen. Praveen, you're on mute. Thanks. Can one of you confirm you can see my screen? We can see your screen and hear you. Thank you. Uh, so we are going to actually uh, do a demo of RAB. Some of you are actually familiar with our previous session. So we'll go, uh, we have, uh, due to time, we'll go as fast as we can. But currently, the industry, we see the challenges where more and more applications are being introduced, right? And these applications need to work together to have the customer implement their complete business use case. Uh, that's where our integration of YC connectivity is going to come into picture. And what does that really connectivity lead to, right? So our artifact where we would actually implement connectivity in OIC is through adapters. We have about 108 adapters uh, today. And as you can see, for folks who have worked on OIC a year ago or so, you would see the number has tremendously improved about about 25 of them. And uh, as Deepak and Nathan pointed out, we have connectivity across all hall spectrum. But is it sufficient? Potentially not. The reason why we are able to actually churn in fast these adapters is we have introduced a new framework called Rapid Adapter Builder. And we were able to deliver 25 in a year, which is first time. Um, and what really is that, right? It is new low code and a much simpler approach to develop and deliver custom adapters. Um, so even though we have a ton of adapters and we continue to churn, we are just not will be able to scale to the level the industry demands. So, so far it is for folks who have developed adapters, it's all code based SDK and you need to have Java expertise. What we are introducing is, it is going to be completely um, a UI driven, and you will see a demo of it shortly, which is, it is tightly integrated with VS Code. And what we see is the development time because we are using it in-house also to de deliver these adapters. So our development effort did come down by 60 to 70%. And one thing we, which we all know it's how painful was it is, it's going to help with iterative development. And I'm going to show you um, that process also. And the cool part is it's going to be similar exactly both in technical and behavioral capabilities. It's going to be similar. And as a partner, you're going to be able to directly publish into the integration store. That's where um, um, Deepak called this out a few times, which is you are, um, I'll, I'll show you when we demonstrate how a customer is going to experience once we de deliver these adapters. But 
you uh, all the when you deliver an adapter and um, publish into the arc ecosystem uh, you are visible your brand and your, as a partner you will be visible to all the 17000 oic instances and our, all the 6000 live customers for oic right with a partner brand enabling and the monetizing is there are two ways you can you can just purely from you can put it there um, as a free thing for branding sake or uh, we are going to actually you have ability to be able to actually even monetize this and how the customer is going to experience free versus uh, a paid we'll, we'll talk in a demo um i mean let's just say you, you have a pretty fast pace to accelerate the market so uh, the slides we want with call to action right so what really you guys can do is we have a lot of training um uh opportunities available and reach out to us also you'll be able to build publish and exhibit yourself as a brand on your on our home page and uh, you can actually put monetize these also so there's references of all what is available today we have a lot of blogs and also live labs for anybody who wants to try certainly reach out to us either your gun madhav or myself will be able to actually help you to that so let's focus i'll be switching between id and this. so as discussed earlier what do we need we need a postman collection or open api doc i'm going to use a postman collection literally i'm going to this uh, we have seen adapters obviously there's a lot of fine tuning required but you'll be able to build an adapter within uh, a few days it's it's going to be that simple so i have already uh, this is visual studio so i've added extensions i won't bore you with all these details it's all self explanatory so what i'll focus on i is actually creating the adapter so i've already pushed my postman collection into the um, uh, ide um, and there are three key steps right one is as we have seen now let me switch back to demo so as we have seen all it requires the heart of solution is adb so uh, adapter definition document all we do is conversion to that and then we register these are the two main steps you to show up in adapter gallery right and as a partner all you have to do is to submit a proposal to oracle once we approve we'll be able to actually start developing and share the artifact we'll be able to publish pretty soon this will be all self explanatory i mean self uh, service where you will be able to actually deliver all these through cloud marketplace that's a project that will go live in um in the early part of next year but certainly where as a opm partner you will be able to publish a, an integration artifact like a recipe or accelerator today already right we are going to actually do the same with adapter also and the experience is going to be so cool that the end customer will be able to get all this from within cloud marketplace itself and the end customer today if they are end up on oic this is what you are going to see uh, so we are this is the key part to call out because you are going to get a demo of all this now and the key part to call out is if it is paid you will be sharing a key with them to install and if it is free anybody can install but it would show your name on the on the home page so i have my postman question that i have to is um wrap uh, i will be convert into a postman um i'll be convert this into an add once the add exists these are the business objects and all the operations from postman collection so i say yes and you will see the postman collection getting created so i did create an add and all i have to do is to really um register the bundle right once i register the bundle so you will be able to actually see the adapter and after in adapter gallery a couple of things is um you just need to change um you there are in a for time reasons we will not go into details but you will be able to change and there is a detail video you're going to as published on how we go about the last session detail session on this right you all you have to do is change these names and what not and you will be able to actually once you publish when you go to your home page and go to the adapter gallery you will be able to see the sana adapters right so the difference here is they are local which means what if you see the rest of it all pre installed that comes with out of box to oracle 
what you see here is local, which means it is the adapter that you are controlling. Let's assume we have validated all this and worked with our help to publish into store. What you are going to see is, is going to be, um, a, I'm a customer, I go to our standard homepage, right? This is where um, Nathan actually walked through this, where you will be able to install accelerators. This as a partner, if you were to actually deliver an adapter, you will be able to actually go um, pick an adapt, pick an adapter here, right? These are the two adapters. Imagine you are the partner, you will be able to actually see adapter by whoever on this, right? So right now you will be the end customer, let's assume you have productionized it and whatnot, the end customer will be able to actually even install it directly because um, you have productionized it working with Oracle and the, all the customers. When you click on get, depending on it's paid or not, you will be able to actually get. So let's assume, let's go ahead and install it. So these are your terms and conditions. So let's assume I check all this. You see the version here, you have ability to deliver. You as a partner or the producer, whoever delivers, will have ability to actually deliver multiple versions of it, right? And ISVs, uh, one of the key advantages is you, you will be able to deliver this. We have already seen partners delivering this where they'll be able to work with Oracle ecosystem. Example, Oracle Forms, some, um, a partner would want to actually work with Oracle Forms and they did deliver something that works with it. So as an ISV or somebody who is delivering it, we are working with over 60 partners who are trying to deliver these adapters now for, for products that they are delivering or for standardizing or showing the brands, right? Several reasons. So once you click on get here, you will be able to install this. And um, so you would see, uh, you would see that show up there, right? So similar experience to whatever the Oracle uh, Act Business Accelerator is. So let's actually see this in runtime for, again, um, I have gotten this all ready to quickly run this. So let's assume this is all configured for now. It's, I've activated this, so let's go to this. What you will see is the, the project base where we are putting in a lot of investments to actually move the whole platform business, different business automation artifacts into this. You'll be able to see this. I'll have to do because it's rust driven, I'll be able to run this. So see this, and if you click on this, that can, this is exactly the experience. This is a RAP based adapter. The experience is exactly what you have seen um, when we have created the adapter otherwise, right? So yeah, this is our code credential. So you have client secret and uh, client ID. So this is the base URL, which is talking to my Asana instance. Asana, by the way, is just a CRM, another CRM market, right? So let's run it. Um, how much time? Yeah, let's quickly run it. So what we have is, um, all we are trying to do is we are going to actually get um, a project ID and get all the, all the, get a workspace ID, get all the projects with it, right? Let's run it and you will see all the projects coming back. So net net where we are getting is, here's your opportunity to actually deliver out of also you to show up on the home page. You'll be able to deliver the multiple versions, continue to actually get support revenue around this. And we have, cust we have partners about 60 of them starting to deliver those things. Uh, with that, um, I think I'm handing it off to Anthony. Robin, thank you very much. So with 1 billion transactions per week, there are certainly some transactions which shouldn't fail. And in that case, for important transactions, Anthony is proud to announce some new advanced capabilities. Anthony, all over to you. Okay, thank you. So as most of you are probably aware, um, we introduced custom endpoint capabilities into OIC3 earlier this year. And so it's now possible to implement a customer managed DR setup um, using those custom endpoints. In this case, all the aspects of DR are owned and responsible, responsibility of the customer. And so you can refer to the documentation for that around how to set up disaster recovery for OIC3. And if you look at that, it's the customer is responsible for setting up the DNS, is responsible for creating two separate OIC instances, uh, making sure that those two instances stay in sync. Each instance needs its own connectivity agent. 
So there's a number of steps that you need to do to, to set up that customer managed DR. So we're pleased to announce that we will be releasing the Oracle Managed Disaster Recovery, which has a number of benefits over the existing customer managed solution. First of all, it's a property of the integration instance. It will be available in new customer instances only, but it means that you just say, hey, I want this to be a DR instance, and it will automatically create the secondary um, instance for you in a defined paired region. Those paired regions mirror the fusion application pairing of regions so that OICDR will work in conjunction with fusion application DR and will be orchestrated and have the ability to be orchestrated by the Oracle full stack DR to make sure that all your component services fail over together. In our initial release, we'll be servicing just Ashburn and Phoenix, but we will be extending that as we'll talk about later. And so when we set up the DR, you get an active passive configuration and Oracle will take care of all the replication of artifacts for you. So there's no need to deploy artifacts to two instances. You deploy it to the primary and it will automatically be copied to the secondary. We currently will be supporting integrations and file server. We'll talk about extending to other services later. We take care of all the design time artifacts and configuration data, and also all the files that are stored on the file server. So those all get automatically synchronized across the primary to the secondary. And then we have a one-click failover and failback. Our RTO and RPO are one hour. Um, in reality, we, we are achieving much better times than that, but that's the official uh, target that we have. So when we compare this diagram to the one that we saw earlier, it's much simpler. You'll notice there's no need for the customer to deal with DNS. There's no need for the customer to deal with synchronization. There's only one connectivity agent and clients will talk to whatever is the active instance. We will take care of automatically switching the DNS for you. So with that said, let's actually go and show you how easy it is to actually create um, an instance. So let's go in, um, we'll call it Anthony Demo 1. So in this case, we're going to go in and in the advanced options, we now have a disaster recovery tab where you can say enable disaster recovery. And note that there will be additional charges for disaster recovery. We'll talk about that later. So one click to enable disaster recovery, create. Okay, I am now started the creation of a disaster recovery instance. That will create the primary here in Toronto. And at the same time, it will create a secondary for me in Montreal. So we can see at the moment, the secondary hasn't uh, appeared, but hopefully by the end of our session, we'll be able to see the secondary in Montreal. So that's the first part, one click to create an OIC instance that is automatically replicated to a second region. Now let's go and look at uh, instance that we created earlier. So here I can go into a instance that had DR enabled. Notice at the top, it tells us that I've gone into the secondary. So this one is not active. And so I look here, I'm in Toronto. So let's go over to our Montreal region and we can see the same instance labeled as remote. So this actually was originally the secondary, but is now the primary. And so we see here it's marked as the primary. So when you go to the URL and you'll notice that the URL does not encode a region in it. So this is a top level URL that is globally accessible and depending on which is primary and which is secondary, it will always route you to the primary. So now, 
Let's say that there's been some disaster in Montreal and we need to fail over to, to Toronto. So we would go to our Toronto region and you can, in fact, fail over from either location. You can say, hey, I just want to, uh, if you're in the primary, you can say, I don't want to use this as primary. Maybe it's a fail back scenario. Or in the event of a true disaster where perhaps you don't even have access to the control plane, we can hit the failover button. It asks us to confirm that we're going to fail over. And then this starts a life cycle operation. So it tells us that the failover process has started. So at the moment, we're still the secondary. But if we go over to the primary, um, let's just go and refresh this. Oh, and sorry, while we're here, you see that in uh, Montreal, we now see that it's automatically created a second instance for us. So this is the secondary instance for that demo one we created earlier. Here's our demo two. We uh, drill in here. Okay, it's still the primary. It's still doing some checking, making sure and shutting down the replication until eventually this will switch to say that there's a operation underway and then it will fail over to the secondary. So again, let's go back. So we saw there one click to create a DR instance, one click to fail over from the primary to the secondary. So just to give you a quick update on the roadmap, we will be adding additional regions. Initially, we're Phoenix and Ashburn, but we will be adding other large regions in 2025, such as Frankfurt and Amsterdam, Sydney and Melbourne, um, Sao Paulo and Vinhedo. Those are some of our largest regions outside of US, and so we will be supporting those. We're working on being able to convert existing OIC instances to become DR capable. We'll be adding support for additional components, including visual builder, process automation, and robotic process automation. In addition to the metadata synchronization, which is all that's supported in the customer managed um, options today, we'll be adding the ability to support failed integrations moving across the instances so that you'll be able to recover them um, wherever the primary is. We'll be adding um, additional runtime data and also audit and tracking data. Also, we'll be providing the ability to customize the environments. For example, if you're using private endpoints, then you might need to tweak the VCN configurations on the two instances. Um, it may be that you you need to have a slightly different URL for some of your connections in some of in the secondary instance compared to the primary. So we will provide the option of configuration overrides in the future. So things I'd like you to remember from today. First of all, Oracle Managed Disaster Recovery is a one click experience. One click to enable it at provisioning time, one click to fail it over uh, when disaster occurs or when you want to test it. It is completely under the customer control when they fail over. Initially available in Phoenix and IAD, so Phoenix and Ashburn in 2024, large regions will follow in 2025. We will be providing a way to upgrade to Oracle Managed DR from existing instances. And there's a sequence of steps we're working on and documenting to allow you to do that. We will, today we support integration and file server. We'll be adding additional capabilities. People will have questions about pricing. We will charge this in the basis of additional message packs. Um, dependent on the message pack consumption will depend on the cost. And we will communicate this to you closer to the formal release, which is currently targeted for 2410. If you have customers that you think would be interested in being early adopters of this, we are still accepting candidates for an August and September. Please reach out to either through Jürgen or myself, and we'll put you in contact with Vernon, um, who is our product manager, who is running the early adopter program. And with that, I'll hand it back to you, Jürgen. Thank you, Deepak, Praveen, Nathan, and Anthony for the excellent presentation and demos.
So to summarize it, with 6,000 plus customers, growth of Oracle integration is exponential. The new team that opens new opportunities for you as a partner is to connect, automate, and innovate. For example, use robotic process automation to automate, innovate with new adapters, and the rapid adapter builder opens up new opportunities for you as a partner and advanced features like disaster recovery. So how can we continue growth in fiscal year FY25? First of all, big thanks and congratulations to all the partners. We would like to celebrate your success. It was an amazing year. Some of the results in last fiscal year. At 14 customer events, we had more than 1,754 attendees. Those events include, for example, the customer webcasts, where we update you on the latest feature and product information. At 37 partner events, we had more than 4,100 attendees, where we, for example, run the three-day hands-on trainings for you as a partner or the partner community webcasts. And thanks for everybody who became a certified expert in the last 12 months, we had more than 5,000 people who were certified. With that, it's one of the top three exams at Oracle. How to continue to accelerate growth, get access to the cloud services, leverage the sales kits, including customer presentation in PowerPoint, where you can add your services and success stories, promote your services via the cloud marketplace and share your customer success stories, become trained and certified, and subscribe to the community to receive the monthly newsletter, to attend the monthly webcast, and collaborate via the Slack channel. So let's look into it. Oracle Cloud is available as a free trial for up to 30 days. You can use the free trial for customer demos or customer proof concepts. And it's very good to use the, the Live Labs as a starting point. The playground is here to test, try, get trained and certified. It's a shared environment where you can register and access the service. For SaaS environments, please use the demo.oracle cloud. So how can you get access to the customer presentation that Deepak showed you today, where you can download the kit in PowerPoint and also make use of the whole content? We support you through the whole sales cycle to prepare with the battle card to discover with the elevator pitch, to develop the opportunity with demos and cloud services, to present the customer deck and to prove the customer success stories. Everything is available at Oracle Sales Accelerator and you as a partner can access the same content that we use to train the Oracle team. So please go at Sales Accelerator, get the kit, download the customer presentation, add your service offerings and your success stories. In marketing, we would like to encourage you to take a look at Partner Finder and Cloud Marketplace. Those websites are available for the Oracle sales team to search for partners who are certified and have certain offerings on Oracle integration. They are also available to our customers and you as a partner. So please look up yourself, update your profile with your latest service offerings, your certifications, and your success stories. The Partner Finder includes everything on premises and cloud, and the cloud marketplace is dedicated to cloud services and cloud applications. There you can also find the latest extensions to Oracle integration and custom build adapters. Thanks for all the successful customer projects. We are keen to highlight your customer success. Therefore, we offer you to run a joint campaign. So please update your profile, complete the WIN template where we can share your information and work with myself to create a campaign that we promote to our customer base for you to accelerate business and to follow up the leads. Training and certification is key. Therefore, we continue to offer the free three-day hands-on bootcamps. Those bootcamps are most suitable for consultants who implement SaaS or integration experts. 
It's a startup bootcamp where you get hands-on trained on HCM, CX, and ERP implementation. For upcoming schedules, please see our research page and read the latest newsletter. The training provides you for the certification. The Oracle Integration Sales Specialist and Solution Engineer is free of charge. It's an online guided learning path, including a free online assessment, which we recommend to take as a prerequisition of the hands-on training. And as a follow-up of the bootcamp, we recommend the application integration professional. The community is here to support you as a partner. As a community member, you get the latest information on the products. You can collaborate. You get access to all the sales and marketing information. And please join to get our newsletter. The newsletter is distributed every month with all key information like upcoming trainings, like upcoming events, but also technical information and all the links to the resources. The resources include the partner community website where you find, for example, today's presentation in the PowerPoint format, where you find also all the other <coughs> product update webcasts, much more information, including marketing material like customer demos and PowerPoints. Today's webcast is live. We are recording the webcast and make it available on demand at our Oracle Video Hub channel, where you can find also all previous webcasts. For questions, please join our Slack channel and post your questions. And thanks for the team for answering all the questions. So to summarize, Make use of the playground to get trained and certified and the free trials for demos and proof concepts. Access Sales Accelerator for the latest sales kits, including the customer presentation in PowerPoint format. Inform us about your success where you have implemented successful Oracle integration via the Win template and work with myself to create a campaign. Become a trained and certified expert with the free hands-on bootcamp and online training and certifications, and the community keeps you informed and updated. As we start the new fiscal year, it's a wonderful opportunity to sit down with your Oracle partner manager from the Alliance and Channels team and create a business plan, which should include your trainings, your certifications, but also your success stories and marketing campaigns. If you have further questions, you can reach out to the team in Europe, Middle East, East and Africa, Neil Kominski is our product manager. In South America, Paolo Mota. In North America, Ravi Chaplani. In India, Ravi Pinto. And in Asia, Steve Tindall. For any kind of partner and customer event questions, contact myself. All links and resources that we presented today are available at bit.ly slash links or se. For customers, the website, documentation, the blogs from the team, the quarterly newsletter. You can ask your questions at Cloud Customer Connect and find certified partners at Partner Finder. For partners, please make sure that you register for the community to receive the newsletter and get access to the community website. Attend the hands-on training, the three-day boot camps. Subscribe to my blog for the latest partner news and you can ask your questions at the Slack channel. Thank you for attending the webcast and please join us for the next webcast, August 27th. Thanks for attending.
Thank you, Deepak, Praveen, Nathan, and Anthony for the excellent presentation and demos. So to summarize it, with 6,000 plus customers, growth of Oracle integration is exponential. The new team that opens new opportunities for you as a partner is to connect, automate, and innovate. For example, use robotic process automation to automate, innovate with new adapters, and the rapid adapter builder opens up new opportunities for you as a partner and advanced features like disaster recovery. So how can we continue growth in fiscal year FY25? First of all, big thanks and congratulations to all the partners. We would like to celebrate your success. It was an amazing year. Some of the results in the last fiscal year. At 14 customer events, we had more than 1,754 attendees. Those events include, for example, the customer webcasts, where we update you on the latest feature and product information. At 37 partner events, we had more than 4,100 attendees, where we, for example, run the three-day hands-on trainings for you as a partner or the partner community webcasts. And thanks for everybody who became a certified expert. In the last 12 months, we had more than 5,000 people who were certified. With that, it's one of the top three exams at Oracle. How to continue to accelerate growth, get access to the cloud services, leverage the sales kits, including customer presentation in PowerPoint, where you can add your services and success stories Promote your services via the cloud marketplace and share your customer success stories. Become trained and certified and subscribe to the community to receive the monthly newsletter, to attend the monthly webcast and collaborate via the Slack channel. So let's look into it. Oracle Cloud is available as a free trial for up to 30 days. You can use the free trial for customer demos or customer proof concepts. And it's very good to use the, the Life Labs as a starting point. The playground is here to test, try, get trained and certified. It's a shared environment where you can register and access the service. For SaaS environments, please use the demo.oracle cloud. So how can you get access to the customer presentation that Deepak showed you today, where you can download the kit in PowerPoint and also make use of the whole content? We support you through the whole sales cycle to prepare with the battle card to discover with the elevator pitch, to develop the opportunity with demos and cloud services, to present the customer deck and to prove the customer success stories. Everything is available at Oracle Sales Accelerator, and you as a partner can access the same content that we use to train the Oracle team. So please go at Sales Accelerator, get the kit, download the customer presentation, add your service offerings and your success stories. In marketing, we would like to encourage you to take a look at Partner Finder and Cloud Marketplace. Those websites are available for the Oracle sales team to search for partners who are certified and have certain offerings on Oracle integration. They are also available to our customers and you as a partner. So please look up yourself, update your profile with your latest service offerings, your certifications and your success stories. The Partner Finder includes everything on premises and cloud, and the cloud marketplace is dedicated to cloud services and cloud applications. There you can also find the latest extensions to Oracle integration and custom build adapters. Thanks for all the successful customer projects. We are keen to highlight your customer success. Therefore, we offer you to run a joint campaign. So please, Update your profile, complete the WIN template where we can share your information and work with myself to create a campaign that we promote to our customer base for you to accelerate business and to follow up the leads. Training and certification is key. Therefore, we continue to offer the free three-day hands-on bootcamps. Those bootcamps are most suitable 
for consultants who implement SaaS or integration experts. It's a startup bootcamp where you get hands-on trained on HCM, CX, and ERP implementation. For upcoming schedules, please see our research page and read the latest newsletter. The training provides you for the certification. The Oracle Integration Sales Specialist and Solution Engineer is free of charge. It's an online guided learning path, including a free online assessment, which we recommend to take as a prerequisition of the hands-on training. And as a follow-up of the bootcamp, we recommend the Application Integration Professional. The community is here to support you as a partner. As a community member, you get the latest information on the products, you can collaborate, you get access to all the sales and marketing information, and please join to get our newsletter. The newsletter is distributed every month with all key information like upcoming trainings, like upcoming events, but also technical information and all the links to the resources. The resources include the partner community website where you find, for example, today's presentation in the PowerPoint format, where you find also all the other <coughs> product update webcasts, much more information, including marketing material like customer demos and PowerPoints. Today's webcast is live. We are recording the webcast and make it available on demand at our Oracle Video Hub channel, where you can find also all previous webcasts. For questions, please join our Slack channel and post your questions. And thanks for the team for answering all the questions. So to summarize, make use of the playground to get trained and certified and the free trials for demos and proof concepts. Access Sales Accelerator for the latest sales kits, including the customer presentation in PowerPoint format. Inform us about your success where you have implemented successful Oracle integration via the Win template and work with myself to create a campaign. Become a trained and certified expert with the free hands-on bootcamp and online training and certifications, and the community keeps you informed and updated. As we start the new fiscal year, it's a wonderful opportunity to sit down with your Oracle partner manager from the Alliance and Channels team and create a business plan, which should include your trainings, your certifications, but also your success stories and marketing campaigns. If you have further questions, you can reach out to the team. In Europe, Middle East, East and Africa, Neil Kominski is our product manager. In South America, Paolo Mota. In North America, Ravi Chaplani. In India, Ravi Pinto. And in Asia, Steve Tindle. For any kind of partner and customer event questions, contact myself. All links and resources that we presented today are available at bit.ly slash links or se. For customers, the website, documentation, the blogs from the team, the quarterly newsletter, you can ask your questions at Cloud Customer Connect and find certified partners at Partner Finder. For partners, please make sure that you register for the community to receive the newsletter and get access to the community website. Attend the hands-on training, the three-day boot camps. Subscribe to my blog for the latest partner news, and you can ask your questions at the Slack channel. Thank you for attending the webcast, and please join us for the next webcast August 27th. Thanks for attending.